Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Train Rush, which is brought to you by MTE Games. It's for two to four players, ages 12 and up, and games generally run about 120 to 240 minutes. Long ago, the great state of Ravenshire sent geologists to find new resources. Nadar Badger went to no man's land, an unfriendly, desolate land, where in the near mountains he discovered a new valuable resource that in the future was about to change the world as it allowed for rapid technology development. This resource was coal. In his honor, the land was named Nader. News of the discovery rapidly reached the nearby nations. All three nations created a few settlements around the mountain, and as time passed, they grew into large cities. And for a time, this new resource and technologies led to war. In this world of difficult negotiations and politics and striving for peace, a major role was played by barons of four factions. One of their ideas for further development and exploitation was to build a railroad that would connect three nations. This would allow them to trade, exchange goods, resources, and technologies, and states would not interfere with their affairs. Today, as a descendant of one of the barons, you fight for influence by transporting required resources and quietly lobbying clerks in state positions. Factions that have the most influence on the economy will dominate the market and win. Will it be you? So, as you can see, there's a lot going on here. Now, this video is very much going to be an overview. If you want a more detailed how to play, they have a fantastic how to play video you should definitely check out. Now, I'm only going to be showing you one player board. Every player will get one of these, and all my cards will be played face up. In the real game, you'll be playing them face down. So, in the main board here, you'll see there's several cities you're going to be visiting, and you know, there's different districts like we talked about. Here we have the red, the green, and the blue, and your trains will start in the middle here, and you're trying to visit all the cities which is one of the game in triggers. If you visit all the cities, that will bring the game to an end, or you're going to move along the different rounds, and in a three or four player game, that's going to be eight rounds, and a two player game, that's nine. And you'll be tracking that here in the middle of the board as well. So when you move around the board with your trains, though, it's important to note that you're only moving in a clockwise fashion. And to move out the different rings and the different areas of the board, you'll have to use these tunnels and bypasses to move through. So lots of interesting things about how you manage your movement along with all the possible actions that are available to you. Then for your main player board, at the very top, you're going to have your spies and your city markers, and then you'll have your agents that you'll be tapping into. You have your warehouse, your transfer stations, you've got your contract markers, you have your influence markers, and you have your coal that will be placed all on your main board. And then you'll get a couple wagons to start the game. Wagons, you can expand your train as you'd imagine throughout the course of the game. And on your main player board, you also will be able to see what you can do at the black market when you visit. And then you're going to have a series of actions cards and hero cards that you're going to start the game with. And then we have our management board. A lot going on over here. At the very top is our influence area and you'll see that the colors are designated the same as the different sectors out on the main board. So you're going to be affecting all kinds of things here. You're trying to get a majority with your spies and agents in these areas in order to get victory points at the end of the game. But this is your influence basically over technology, trade, all kinds of different things throughout the course of the game. And then we have our technology track, which is kind of your income track as well. But here you'll see how much influence you're gonna gain, which influence gives you markers that translate into actions. And then it shows how much coal you're gonna get on your turn, as well as how much cargo you can load and unload, and how many more wagons you can add to your train. All of that is designated here on that technology track, and every round of the game will dictate what you're gonna be able to do, obviously, based on what level you are. And as you get to the very top, only one player can be at the very top, giving you those victory points again at the end of the game. And then the influence section of the management board is kind of the action selection of the game where you're going to be taking your influence markers and spinning them in order to do these various actions. So you need to spin them wisely, obviously. And there's a finite number of how many of these actions can be performed. So you're going to be able to buy more coal. Coal is going to help you in movement through the course of the game. And you can build, you can build warehouses and transfer stations. Now it's important to note, you can only build in the sectors that you're in. So if you're in green, you can build in the green sector. Another option available to you is to load your wagons with precious cargo. As you travel around the map, you'll be visiting cities and delivering this cargo. 
and then we have movement. Now there's a whole movement phase, but this gives you bonus movement. And then you can upgrade your wagons from a single wagon to a two wagon to a three wagons, which means you can just carry more cargo. And then you can buy more action cars, movement cars basically. And then you have corruption. Corruption, you can send your agents to the influence part of the board to get that majority that you might be after. And it is important to note that when you do put the spies or the agents here, there might be bonuses as well. Next to that, we have the railway siding bonus. Now, these are instant actions, which basically mimic the actions we just talked about. And when you're out on the main board and you move into one of these siding areas, railway siding areas, you get to grab one of the corresponding tiles. It's an instant action, you perform it and discard it and refill that particular slot. Then we have the contract area and the state contracts, which coincide with each other. And as you deliver cargo to the different cities, then you'll take your contract marker based on what you did, the two, the three, the four, or the five, and you'll mark it off on that contract area with your marker. No one else can put one there then, and you'll gather that particular contract and get those victory points, replacing it for the next person. So, I mean, there's obviously lots of slots here, and whoever delivers the most will get some extra victory points at the end of the game in each of the different sectors. So that is a crucial part as well. I mean, there's so many choices to be made as you move through and play this game. Now, at the bottom of the board is your infrastructure track for your warehouses and your transfer stations. You'll be moving up along those tracks again based on the different sectors you're in. And then you have your contractors. As contractors get assigned to warehouses, you start to move up along that track. And again, these tracks would have bonuses associated with them, actions and things, helping you move up your technology track. And same with the influence track, same kind of thing. All kinds of different bonuses that can happen as you move along these different areas. And obviously at the end of the game, depending on who has the most and so forth will determine how many victory points you're going to gain and around the edge of the board is where you'll be tracking those points and so you can see that the management board heavily plays into just about everything you're doing so the structure of the game consists of seven phases. First, you're gonna be auctioning. You're gonna be using one of your numbered spies in order to gain a position, a numbered position in this particular round. Placing it there, you'll make the adjustment and you'll see who's gonna go first. Whoever goes first then takes their meeple, their spy, and places it in the influence region. The first most available left spot at the top. Now, once you place it there, you're gonna be laying it down to show that that region is taken and then the next player will go and so forth. So once that has all happened, you'll stand those meeple up and you'll take the technology that the icon represents, giving you more abilities through the course of the game as you move up this technology track. Next up, you're gonna be gaining income based on this technology track. You're going to get influence markers and coal and also again, this track shows how much you can load and unload as well as how many wagons you can add to your train. So that is the key part. Obviously you need those influence markers and coal. Influence markers perform actions and coal to move around the board. And then we have the investment phase of the game. And I really feel like this is the heart of the game. This is where you're performing your actions, your action selection, you're spending your influence tokens to perform those actions. And it all takes place in the region where your locomotive is. So you're gaining coal again, or you're building buildings, or you're adding cargo to your wagons, or perhaps you're upgrading wagons, or you're gaining cards, or you're gaining bonus movement, or corruption where you can add agents to that influence area help you gain victory points within the game. So those are key to pretty much everything you're doing. And then it's the movement phase and you're gonna be spinning one of your action cards. You'll see on these action cards, you have various options available to you, but you do start at the top of the card and work your way down. And you're gonna to have to spin coal along the way. Not always, sometimes movement is free, but in general, you're gonna be spinning coal until you get down to this bonus action. You spend enough coal and you can perform this action, which gives you, in this case, you're gonna get more influence markers. So it is crucial. And as you move around the board, you have to use the full movement and unless you enter into a city. And if you do enter into a city, you can stop your movement there. And you'll spend one of your city tokens on that city, show that you've been there. And if there's a bonus token, you'll take that for movement later in the game. It's a really nice option available to you for sure. And your other option is stopping in a black market. And again, those black market options are gonna be available to you, show what's available on your player board by spending cargo. And then you have those railway side stations where you get those bonus actions off the management board. So that's the key thing about movement. Lots of neat things that can happen while you're out around the board. Visiting cities is one of the ways to bring the game to an end. 
And when you're in a city, you also can take advantage of renting warehouses to an available contractor, or more importantly, unloading your cargo to the city to fulfill one of those contracts that were out on the management board that we talked about before. So cities are key to a lot of what you're doing in the game. And then we have the mission phase, where you can play one of your hero cards. Of course, you have to match the requirements. Are you in the city? Do you match the icon? If you do, you grab the token. You can play this card, and when you do, you get a bonus action in the top right corner. It's pretty much gonna mimic what you saw in the action selection. And at the end of the game, if you have the type of cargo called for on this card, you'll get those victory points. Final phase of the round is just the end of round and cleanup and so forth. So those are the basics of gameplay here. Again, so much going on. And you're gonna play until you've hit the eight rounds or someone has visited all the cities. So, and then you're gonna total up all your points. Whoever has the most is going to be the winner. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, you know, this is a heavier game for sure. There's a lot going on, but this management board makes it really easy to track what you're doing, but it really can change up how you play. What is the main thing you're gonna be focusing on this game and so forth? I like that aspect and how you can get bonus actions. Performing one might possibly chain into other actions for you. I like that aspect a lot. And I, just the presentation style of this game is just beautiful. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table.